I guess we're back. I thought we were going to go to a tune, but I guess not. And, uh, hey, you're listening to Time Out with Kevin Gallagher. This is the radio version of the program, and we were just on the air for the first hour with Tex Mars, author. We've been talking about the uh, profound effect that robots are going to have on the society as we move forward. And it's going to be a profound effect. It's going to happen very quickly. And in my mind, it really connects together a lot of the different issues that we see going on that upsets many of us that are awake. And we're going to talk about a lot of issues. We're going to talk about uh, some various issues tonight. And if you want to call in, I, I sometimes will get really involved talking to a guest. And, and shame on me, I forget to put in uh, the call out, the call in, to put out to you the call in number. I switched that. How you like that? And um, that number to call in so that you can interact with us is 347 215 6580. Again, that's 347 215 6580. And then you'll hear the cheesy music playing. Hit the number one on your keypad. And that'll let our engineer know that um, you, know, you want to get it you know, in on the uh, program. And before I forget, Patty and, and Brad, who run uh, these Changing Times Radio Network and also that runs uh, Revelation Radio Network, thank you so much for being there week in and week out to get the program out on the air. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. So, again, my many thanks to you. It's important, uh, I think, that people can hear this program and hear the issues that are talked about. Max Egan is with us. He's um, all the way out for me on the other side of the world for me in Australia. So, Max, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining me tonight. Nice to be here, Kevin. Thanks for asking me on, brother. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, how would it would be best to introduce yourself, background, to the people who are listening? Um, look, I'm a filmmaker and an author. I've got a radio show that I do, a radio talk show called Surviving the Matrix. I've been researching the global situation most of my life pretty well. Yeah. Started off with ancient history and sort of moved into mm -hmm. government cover-ups because it's all really related. And yes, it's it just is. been an ongoing thing that I've been doing for most of my life. And I, it was a hobby for a very long time. And it turned into a full-time uh, job, really. Uh, once things started getting serious, as they have been in the last sort of decade or so. Hmm. What is the one thing that really clicked in your mind or event that happened um, that really made you go, oh, wow, this is much bigger than I thought it was? Well, I'd always known it was big. It was just it was just that it was like you, you sort of detach from it. You look at it, it's kind of like reading a spy novel, you know, the great conspiracy, mm -hmm. the whole story, the big cover-up, the whole dark <laughs> secrets of the world, you know. It's sort of like an adventure story. And we were waiting for the big event to happen that was going to usher in the new world order, you know, but it always seems like it's something off in the distance or something that's happening on a movie screen, you know? Yes. But when 9-11 happened, like so many other people, I went, hang on, this is it. This is, this is serious. This isn't a hobby. This is serious. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Why am I treating this as a hobby when it's so serious? 3,000 people just died to, to make this happen. And, and that's when I started speaking out like so many other people because I, I actually felt quite guilty that I hadn't beforehand because I began to see how I'd been programmed to kind of view it as a spy novel and I think many people are and I get into the program of the fight and the program yeah. of the the whole you know deep dark secret story and it becomes a fascination for them but they detach themselves from it and they don't realize that they're part of it they're part of history we're writing history right now we tend to right that right and it's you make a good point because I think for a lot of people, it's almost like they do the research to act like a, the way a little kid would do. And they'd go, I know something you don't know. I know something you don't know. And, and that's not, you know, why we do this. We do this because we want people to know what's actually going on, to know that when you walk out of your house, everything you're looking at is a fraud. That, well, yeah. that to me is is shaking them awake and saying, you know, it's like in the movie Moonstruck when Cher slaps the guy and says, snap out of it. We're, 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 we're grabbing him by the shoulders and saying, none of what you're looking at is real, Sh you know, and shake him out of it. But sometimes you, you can't. Well, you can't. And, and, and sometimes it's like the Matrix. Some people just aren't ready to wake up. You know, it's yeah. a big it's a big shock for a lot of people to, to find out suddenly that everything they thought was true about the world is wrong. And that yes. most of their life has been completely meaningless, and they've been working towards goals that they can never achieve. You know, we're, we're taught to externalize everything about ourselves, so we spend our lives collecting all this stuff, thinking it's going to make us whole, but it doesn't. We miss out on ourselves, we miss out on our relationships, we miss out on life itself because we're too consumed with trying to reach certain goals that we can never reach and climb certain rungs on a 
non-existent social ladder. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're living in a matrix. We're quite literally yeah. living in a in a fictional construct. And, and people, it's, it's a real shock for them when they wake up to it. And that's what I try to do with the shows is as well. I try to point out that it's a construct, but there's a solution to it all. You know, it's, it, We have a real problem, but really a problem is an opportunity for you to fix the problem. You have to be aware of the problem so you know how to, how to address it. You can't yeah. address it if you're not aware that it's there. But there's so many people that are in this movement that are just screaming out, fear, fear, fear. And yeah, they're not yeah, yeah. And they're not offering any solutions to people. And and a lot of people, when they do get into this, yeah, there's a lot of the, yeah, I know something you don't know, but then it does become like a spy novel. It becomes very interesting. Yeah. Oh, what's the next move going to do? This big, mm-hmm. dark, secret spy versus spy world that's going on that most people don't know about. I know it's there. And it becomes a, like a movie for them. And they've got to understand that um, they can do something about changing it. They can change the direction we're going. And that, that's what I try to do with the shows is point that out to people that we can make a difference, each one of us individually, if we choose to, if we choose to act. Yeah, Max, um, before I forget, tell people a little bit about your show, where they can hear it, when it's on, um, you know, basically, you know, in the United States and over on the other side of the world. For me, the other side of the world where you are. Well, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it runs, it airs on Friday nights on American Voice Radio Network. You can tune in and, on your dial and, and listen to it on the radio, or you can go to the website and you can stream it online. I've got a website called thecrowhouse.com, dot com, and I post it there. It's usually up there by every, every Saturday morning as a podcast. I also do a YouTube clip that goes with it, and that goes on YouTube. So it's up every week. It's just a weekly radio show. Um, I talk about the problems that we face, but I'm, I'm always trying to base it in solutions. I, th- I think people need to realise what their relationship with government is and what their relationship to, to reality is, what their relationship to the earth and to each other is, what their relationship to themselves is. I mean, most people are so disconnected. They really are. They, they, they just they see the problem, but they feel like they're just a little person who can't make a difference. Yeah. And that's what I try to do with this show. It's called Surviving the Matrix. Um, I believe that all of these problems that we're facing are opportunities. I think that we're actually at one of the most pivotal times in human history where we're being presented for the first time in human history. We're being presented with a real opportunity for freedom because with the Internet and the way the world has been made smaller now, we, we, we've now got the, the whole workings of the mechanism laid bare for all to see. Everyone can see how controlled they are. Everyone can see how much they're being scammed, how much the wealth yeah. of this planet is being stolen by a very, very few people through this whole fictional system, this paper-based reality they've created, all this legislation that they call law, which actually does harm to people. So people are beginning to wake up and they're beginning to see it. And this, I believe, is the first time in human history that we've ever had this laid so bare for all to see. And this has thereby provided us with the greatest opportunity we've ever had for some real freedom if we choose to act. Let now, me ask pop- you this question. Let me ask you this question. We're along with what you're saying. Do you think that... The internet and these things, and 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 how you're explaining how, and I agree with you, it makes the world very small because what we're doing right now couldn't have been done just a few years ago. You're sitting somewhere in Australia, I'm sitting somewhere here in the United States, and people all around the world have the ability to listen to this conversation right now and and take it for what it's worth. Um, that wasn't possible, but with the internet and, and and the things that are available to us, you know, it does some really incredible things. So the the ability for people to have – the way I look at the Internet is being like a library where you have just unbelievable amounts of information, some of it good, a lot of it bad, but it's available where it wasn't before. Um, do you think that the the powers that be, the the people that want to put this matrix into place, the, the ones that write the spy novel, however way you want to put it, the controllers, that this was intentional, or, or do you think it was – Partly intentional? Do you think that it was, uh, we, we goofed, we shouldn't have given them this tool? Look, in some ways, but in, in many ways, no. I think, uh, I think it's all been done by design because, I mean, there's a dark side to the Internet as well. I mean, they can certainly track everybody and know who the yeah. dissenters are, where they are, what networks they've got. I mean, don't think that all of this isn't tracked because it is. We've just seen mm-hmm. this with the, with the revelations yes. of Edward Snowden. We already knew this, that they were doing it. What was beautiful about that was that it just showed everybody in the mainstream who thought we were all conspiracy theorists that, hey, it's actually true. They're mm-hmm. tracking every single thing you do. So it's done that, but it's also got a darker side because many people are very, very comfortable in the virtual world provided by the Internet 
But because of that, many of them are actually losing their life skills. If you look at the kids these days, a lot of them are using, losing their, their life skills. They're losing their ability to interact with people in a personal way. It's all done online. I mean, I mean yeah. it's great in a way because it's non-judgmental. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white or fat or skinny or Chinese or Japanese or, or Korean or whatever you are. It doesn't matter. You know, you're on the internet, you're just two voices that are talking to each other, you get a feel for each other, and you communicate. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you look like. You could be there with, with, with hair growing out of you everywhere, in the sloppiest clothes, you know, grossly overweight, in a dark, dingy room. You could be the loveliest person on the planet. You know? But people look at you and they go, oh, no, I don't want to associate with him because of what he looks like. So we've right. lost, lost that. We don't have to really take care of ourselves that much anymore, and we get to interact, and we can re reinvent ourselves online into something that we're not necessarily that person, you know what I mean? And so a lot yes. of people are very comfortable with that reality. So what it's really doing is it's providing a, a virtual world for people, and it's leading us towards transhumanism. It's leading us towards a completely roboticized society. And so it's yeah. got that darker side as well. And sure, it's, it's given us the, the tools to be able to um, communicate this information to people. But if people don't act on that information in the real world that exists outside of the Internet, then they're just being part of the problem and they're allowing the world to, to turn to hell around them. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's too many people that just, just get online and talk about all this stuff. And they think that because they're doing that, they're making a difference. You've got to participate in the world as yeah. well. I mean, it's great to talk online and do what we're doing, do these radio shows. It needs to be done, but you've got to participate. You've got to translate that into yeah. the community around you, you know? I, I say it on the show all the time. People are, people are probably sick of me saying it. And, and the thing is that the way I put it is get off the couch, stop watching American IDLE, and actually do something. Don't sit there idle watching TV. As you were saying, just listening to the radio shows. I mean... I listen to a lot of radio shows myself, but I'm actually out there fighting. I'm actually out there in the fight, swinging, doing what I have to do in order to um, – no, I, I feel better about myself when I'm engaged, and I know that here at my local level, I'm actually making a difference, and, and that's very important to me. And, and even here at the local level, there's a lot of people who want nothing to do with me because – you know, I'm fighting against them, and it's their agenda. And we just had a whole thing go on here where I live with a company in Australia called Aquarian, um, who's buying up all the water on our east coast. And um, we would, excuse me, <coughs> we would have lost all of our water rights. We would have lost um, all of our water, for that, for that matter. And water is becoming one of the strategic resources that these people want to be able to, to maintain control over. And thankfully, even with our magical mystery machines that we used to vote on, it still went down over three to one in the vote. And, and thankfully, we do have the ability to, to vote on these things. So, I mean, our... our for, for it's not a mayor, it's called the first selectman, but our mayor, for lack of a better word, he was very underhanded, very deceitful, was trying to get this all done without anybody trying, you know, knowing what was going on, and, and who knows what kind of backroom deal was made, but thankfully we were able to stop this, and, and, it, and it's a matter of being engaged, being involved, knowing what's going on. Um, I'll spend a lot of time on, on my program talking about the problem, and there's a reason for that because I want people to understand what what the problem is. Because until you know what the problem is, you can't do anything about it. And and for me, once I know what the problem is, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I want to go actually do something about the problem to make it go away. And I believe it was Einstein that said that. Um, and I forget exactly how the quote goes. I'll, I'll butcher it, but he said problems have are solved at a higher level of awareness than what created them. So we have to get that higher level of awareness so that we can actually do something about the problem. Yeah, absolutely we do. We, we definitely do. And, and what people need to understand is that there's a higher problem. The, the real problem, I mean, all, all of the things like with the water table, what you're just doing with the water, this is a symptom of, of, a, of a higher problem. This is what I've, yes. I've been talking about on this show so, so very often. You know, the whaling, the coal seam gas mining, all of these things that are being done. Agenda 21, this is what all this is about. The water mm -hmm. table, it's, it's all about Agenda 21, concentrated pockets of civilization and control of all the resources. And, and the, now that you've voted that out, they'll just they'll repackage it and they'll bring it back in in another way with another company with a different title and they'll present yeah. it to you in a different environmentally friendly way how they're doing this to save the planet. 
and they'll they'll do it. They'll they'll keep pushing until they get it through. And if they don't, then they'll gradually dumb the population down through the education system, and they'll try it again in another few years once we've got more young kids enter the you know the adult workforce and uh, are able to vote. And, and they don't, you know, they're not aware because the government controls all the education systems. So they make sure that people are completely uninformed about these issues and that they think yeah. the government's their friend and that they need the government to look after them. Right. And they repackage it and they present it again. Eventually, they get the numbers that they need that are stupid enough to vote this stuff in. And that's right. the way they do it, you know. But all, all these things are symptoms of the larger problem, which is government corruption. The, you know, the right. problem is that we, we lack transparency in our government. We've forgotten what our relationship to government is. These people are simply public trustees. I've been beating this horse to death for six oh, years yeah. on the radio saying, hey, guys, mm -hmm. they're just public trustees. We actually employ them to look after our infrastructure for us. That is the function of government. That's the only function of government. That's the only reason we even need government. We only need right. government because they created a system whereby we need them, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the nanny state, you know. That they've yes, dumbed yeah. down everybody. They've taken everybody's life skills away from them, and now we need, you know, we need new parents to look after us. And that they've created this whole situation. So that's what we need to do: is to become aware of the fact that these people are simply public trustees. And if they are enacting legislation which does harm to the population, then they're in breach of trust. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And if yeah, we had the respect for each other in our communities that we should have, if we weren't so competitive because we've been forced to live within the parameters of this economic model whereby we've got to spend our lives ripping each other off in order to collect the paper we need to pay to be alive. I mean, what sort of a scam is that? You know, we get rid of that. We start to actually respect each other and respect our communities. The power of community could change the world in three seconds if oh, yeah. we simply realize who and what we were. So that's the thing. Everyone's screaming out for freedom in this movement. But they're not aware of what freedom is because freedom is 100% self-responsibility. That's what freedom is. Yes. And if you're not and prepared nowadays, to do people that... Don't want the re yeah. They don't want we, the responsibility. They want government to take care of them. Exactly, but they're all screaming out that they want freedom. You know, and and if you're not prepared to be 100% responsible for everything you say and do, 100% responsible for your life, then you're not prepared to be free. Right. You know? That's what freedom is, you know, but we're taught that, no, you can't be that. It's dangerous to be free. You need the nanny state to look after you. You know, we need to be able to do this. We have to have guidelines. You've got to get permits and you've got to do this. You can't look after yourself. You'll hurt yeah. yourself, you know. It's, it's ridiculous. People are just, just completely disempowered and it's all, it's all fear-based mind control. You know, our kite is out to get you. There's people, the thieves are going to come and break into your houses and all this stuff's going to happen. It's going to be terrible. You need us. You know, that's what government does, you know. And that's the problem, you know. The problem is that they're trustees, they're all in breach of trust, and they get away with it because we've forgotten who we are. You know, what's interesting is um, when I first ran for public office, I ran for our, our town zoning board back in 19, what was it, 1995. And my campaign slogan was um, a public office is a public trust. That was my campaign slogan. And because at that time, even going back on, in those years in my town, the public trust was constantly, you know, being mashed on like a bunch of grapes when they're making wine. I mean, that's basically how the public trust was being treated. And so, you know, I, I had won that, that uh, election back then. I served the four years, and now I'm crazy enough to go and run again because of the fact that the police are so out of control that I see going on around the United States, and I know it's going on around the world as well, um, so now I'm right now trying to get on to the ticket to run for the police commission in my town so I can keep an eye on what's going there. I don't want to do it, but I, I sit there and I say to myself, if I don't do this, I'm going to be kicking myself because it's just I know that somebody that like myself that knows what the agendas are, that, that what's going on, I need to be in that position to try to stop it. Well, yeah, I mean, you can do what you can. The problem is that, you know, you get into those uh, sort of corporate entities, you start getting involved with them, and you end up, you have to play yeah. by their rules. Oh, yeah. And and if you don't, then you get quickly removed from power or something gets set up and you, you suddenly find that there's a, a large controversy being created about you, you get named as a pedophile or whatever. You oh, know. yeah. There's all sorts I, of things I that they do. I know how to do that. 
I know how yeah. to deal with that. I, I, I actually had the uh, chairman of the Republican Party in my town write me a threatening email the uh, other day. I'm not going to get into too much detail with it, but it's going to be dealt with this Friday night when I tape a show. We're going to deal with that and expose that because the best way you deal with a threat is to make it public. It disarms the power of the threat. So all that's going to go public. And, yeah, um, well, that's, that's good. You know, all that's going to go public because he wants to do that in the dark. No, no, no. Big, giant searchlight's going to go on top of the threat so that everybody knows. And uh, I've dealt with that crap before, and I, I don't – I actually have a backbone, so I don't back down to this crap. And, um, you know, I believe – and I'll run this by you. I sincerely believe that if we can take our towns back, when we take back our communities, that means for me in the United States, I can take back my state of Connecticut. Okay, I, if we can take back our town, we can take back our state. If we can take back our states, we can take back our country. If we can take back our countries, we can wrestle the power away from these psychopathic maniacs that are now believing they're controlling everything. Well, yeah, I mean, it's got to start with the individual. You've got to take back yourself as well. I mean, that's what people have yeah. to do. They've got to, it, it's got to start with the individual. I mean, and, and um, see, a lot of people said to me, why don't you run for office and why don't you do this and why don't you be our spokesperson? We'll go out and we'll fight and we'll get these guys. Yeah. And I'd say, well, um, the system's fiction. The system only exists yeah. on paper. It's not real. It's a matrix. If I yeah. fight it, I'm giving power to it. I'm saying mm -hmm. it's real. It's real. I'm, you're real and I'm coming to fight you. But it's not. Yep. It's a cloud. I'm fighting a cloud. It's fiction. Why am I fighting a non-existent enemy? I mean, that's insanity. You know, yeah. I am I am who I am, and I have 100% um, responsibility for my actions, and I'm answerable only to my Creator, God, whatever I perceive that God to be. Uh, and I'm not even a particularly religious person, but that that's that's who I'm answerable to. And if mm -hmm. this system chooses to inflict itself upon me, well, I'll, I will defend myself against the system, against its fiction, but I won't attack it because it's fiction. I just mm -hmm. won't comply with anything at once. I'll just live my life and do what I want to do, yeah. and I always have. Basically, I don't participate yeah. in the system. I don't pay tax. I don't vote. I don't have anything to do with this system. And if it ever tries to come for me, I, I ask it to establish its jurisdiction, which it's never been able to do because it has no control over this vessel that I inhabit, which mm -hmm. is my body. I inhabit this vessel. So... If people really can understand the power of themselves that they have in themselves and their power to simply step away from this entire fictional system, the whole system would cease to exist. The problem is that people, they, they form these committees, these groups, and they go on the yes. rampage to attack it. There's a figurehead that gets corrupted. It's an organization. Mm -hmm. They incorporate. They do all this. They become what they're fighting. And then exactly. they go out and they try, to, they try to attack it using its parameters, to me, I say, no, it's fiction. I don't have to participate mm -hmm. in it. Who the hell are you people? I don't care if you're in fancy dress. I don't care what your uniforms are and what titles you've given yourselves. You have no jurisdiction over oh, this vessel that I inhabit. We just lose our guest. No, no, I'm still here. Let's take a look and see. Yep, we just lost our guest. Let's see if we can get Max back on the program. And uh, uh, we have been talking with Max Egan, who is out in uh, Australia, and we're going to try to get him back on the program. If you want to call in and talk with us, the telephone number is 347-215. Yeah, but Max, I, I see you typing. I can't hear you, but um, hmm, very interesting. I can't hear you, but you can hear me. Very interesting. Let me uh, do this. 347-215. 6580 is the call in number and uh, let's just see here what we can do to get Max back on the program. Um Max, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. We hear you loud and clear now. Why okay. don't you kind of pick up where you left off? I don't know what happened then. Where was I? Well, where they didn't was like I? what you were saying, I guess, because you're talking about a person being an individual, thinking for themselves, and not being sucked in by all of the uh, menagerie of illusion of of government and everything that's around them. Well, that's the thing, you know, because it is. It's all fiction, and and they just make it up on paper. They just write it down, and they say, "Look, it's law," because it's got a fancy letterhead on this piece of paper. You have to do it now because we made it up. But it, right. they just they just made it up. It's not law. There's only really one law, and that's do no harm. If you really want to get into it, there's common law, and common law right. is basically based on that, do no harm. But even common law is a construct. We made it up. 
You know, if anything does harm to you or, or to anything else, then it's breaking the law because that's the only law. Do no harm. And if the government is, is writing legislation which does nothing but harm to society, th then who broke the law? The government did. Of course they did. And, and they take you to their court and they, they make you play by their parameters. I say to them, who are you people? You know, who are you? I, I stand before you in the capacity of what is known in your legal system as sui generis. This means that I'm unique. And you can identify me by my fingerprints and by my DNA. So even under your law, I'm unique. Therefore, right. I'm, not, I'm not subject to the laws of my peers because I have no peers. I'm a unique expression of creation. I'm not part of the general population. I'm a unique expression of creation. And I am answerable only to my creator. And if you are claiming you have jurisdiction over me, then I need to see a contract bearing the wet ink signature of my creator which gave you jurisdiction over this vessel. And if you cannot provide me with that, then you need to show me proof of claim that you are not part of, part of a slavery system because I'm accusing you of running a slavery system. Yeah, what? And, you know, that, that's the opportunity. I mean, that's the opportunity you've got to deal with these people in that manner. And that's the way I always deal with them because it is. It's a slavery system. They well, have no jurisdiction speaking, over you or how, anybody how else. Does, practically speaking, how does somebody go about doing that? Because I have a friend right now that is sitting in jail very good friend of mine, he is sitting in jail for doing absolutely nothing. And they railroaded him into jail, and he tried a lot of this, what, what people would call commercial law and this and that. And I'll tell you right now, he's living proof that that commercial law crap does not work because that boy is sitting in jail for four years for doing absolutely nothing. Exactly, because they, they, they make you step into their system. You know, They make you go in and enter a plea. I'm not guilty. Well, hang on, I'm not even entering a plea. I, I haven't been presented with a valid law to plea to. You haven't established your jurisdiction over me yet because I am sui generis. I can't and move past this point. I can't enter a plea. I can't even enter your court until I find out who you are because by even coming to my house and accusing me of breaking one of your rules that you wrote on a piece of paper... I'm accusing you of being a slave trader, and you need to right. show me proof of claim that you're not by providing me with a wet ink signature bearing the, the jurisdiction, the, the contract, bearing the wet ink signature of my creator, which gave you jurisdiction over this vessel that I inhabit. You know? How, how does one practically enforce that, though? Because what I saw, and I'm just playing devil's advocate with you. So no, that's okay. But that's, is, that, that's okay. With, the thing is, that, that's the approach that you have straight away when they take you to court. When you walk into court and you tell them you're there in, in the capacity of sui generis, who are you people? We Why are you again. using my name? Oh, my God. Uh, let's see if we can get Max back. Are you there, Max? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, there you are. Okay. It seems like every time you get to a really good point, you kind of disappear. But it, it uh, what I was going to say, yeah, it happens yeah, it when happens. I try to discuss this with people. But the thing is, when you get to their court straight away, before you, you don't offer them a plea. As soon as they call your name, you, you say, yes, I'm here regarding that matter. And I'm here in the capacity of sui generis. I need, to, I need to know who you people are, why you've called me to this room. You need to establish your jurisdiction over me. Straight away. First thing. Before you do anything oh, yeah. else. Because they can never establish that jurisdiction because they don't own you. It's a slavery system. You know, as I soon, as you, as, soon as you immerse yourself in there and you start making differentiations between commercial law and this law and that law, you can yeah. start mingling. You, you, you're playing their game. You know, it's all fiction. It's all fiction. Yeah, it's all all fiction. commercial law. All of it is fiction. We wrote it all down on paper. We made the whole thing up. All of it mm -hmm. is fiction. Even most of the free man movement, it's fiction. You know, they're yeah. talking about this and that and, you know, is the Queen of England valid because the stone of scone was moved and all this? It's a stone. Oh, yeah. Who gives a damn who sat on what stone? Who dreamed what? Who gives a hell what they wrote on what piece of paper somewhere? What king con conquered what country? Who drew some border on some map and named some piece of land a country? Who cares? We made the whole thing up. What is real is life and people. That's what's real, life and this planet and this earth and what we could be as a species if we chose to, to go in that direction. All the rest well, of it's quite a thought. it all up, you know. It's quite a thought to uh, think what we could be instead of the uh, crap that we're going through now. Well, yeah, see, that, that's my approach to the whole thing. I mean, I think there's a lot of great work been done with the free man movement and with all the whole exposing of the commercial fiction and all this stuff. It's all great to expose the fiction, but people need to realize that the operative word here is fiction. It's all fiction. You know, the, the valuable wealth on this planet is life. 
You know, we've been taught that it's all this external stuff, and we've got to abide by all these rules. When all of these rules do is do harm to the planet. You know, the system's created these rules to protect itself so that the wealth of this earth can be stolen from the people and transferred into the hands of very, very few at the top who control the whole thing. But it's all fiction. And we can step above it all. I mean, even with what I'm saying about sui generis and, and how they have no jurisdiction, it, it's difficult for most people to do this because they don't have the confidence in themselves to be able to do it. They're all looking for the silver bullet, the piece of paper, right, the, the, right. the line. They can go into court and they can deliver this to the judge because they're going in there with the attitude that I'm going to fight this guy. I'm going to beat him at his own game. I don't go in with that attitude. I just go in there with the attitude that it's all fiction. Who are you people? Yeah, you made this whole thing up. Who are you? Show me. Show me who you are. Show me how you have jurisdiction over this vessel that I inhabit. Who am I? I'm a frequency of consciousness that inhabits this biological vessel. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I am. I am living flesh and blood. A frequency of consciousness inhabiting the vessel given to me by creation for the experience. Who are you people? How, how do you claim to have jurisdiction over this vessel that I inhabit when I've done no harm in any of my actions to anybody? You know, and that's my attitude to these people. I don't fight them. I treat them all with respect. I treat them all as my brothers and my sisters. They've all just been brainwashed. That's why they're doing what they do. I don't want to fight the judge. Like the judge is just a, a poor guy or a poor woman who thinks that this fictional system is real. The poor mm -hmm. judge is brainwashed. He's probably got ulcers from, from all the people and all the <laughs> lives and the people he's destroyed. And yeah. these police officers, I mean, you can't even get a job as a police officer if you've got an IQ over 105. Yeah, These yeah. people aren't exactly intelligent. How can I hate them? They don't know what you they're know, doing. It, you know? It's pretty awful because I'll tell you a story. I worked with autistic teenagers years ago, and I was in our local mall with, with, one, of my, with one of my guys, and he started acting up. And, of course, you know, one of the local police come by, and I can see him reaching for his belt where his gun is, and, and I yell over to him, He's autistic. And the cop just completely froze, and, and he stepped back, and he goes, you better deal with this. I go, I am, but you're going to need to step back, you know. And um, and I dealt with it, and I kind of got the guy out of the mall and into the van. And uh, now, I mean, you're looking at – there were two videos that I came across this week, one with an eight-year-old kid that's being taken from his mother, and the kid is up, obviously upset. Who? What kid wouldn't be? And the cop turns around and just hauls off and smacks him. And I mean, I'm just like, you you got to be kidding me. Uh, and then the next the next video that that to me is pretty significant is there's a mentally disturbed 12 year old girl. She's acting up, and the the cop comes in thinking that he's Mike Tyson and just wails on her. And you just see her whole body go back, her whole head, everything. And I'm like, what's wrong with these people? I mean. Are you so tough you can beat up an 8-year-old kid and a 12-year-old girl? I mean, what's wrong with you? Well, I mean, yeah, What's they, wrong with these people? Well, they're trained to be that way. I mean, we've got a society that's trained to nurture uh, soci sociopathy in people. It's trained to create um, people that are sociopaths and people that do this. Most of these cops come from broken homes. They've you know, been picked on at school. They've got huge chips on their shoulders. And they get out and they, they get in the police force and they're pretty stupid. You know, They've got not high IQs. And they go out there and they just inflict themselves upon people because they can. You know, it's just unfortunate. That's the sort of society that we, we've created. And what yeah. people have to understand is that w what this is is terrorism. You know, if you look up the, oh, yeah. the Oxford Dictionary definition of terrorism, is described as violence or the threat of violence carried out against civilians as a means of coercion, often for political reasons. Right. And this is what police officers do to civilians every single day. If you do not do what a police officer says, they threaten you with terrorism. That's what they do. I've openly called them terrorists in public. When I've seen them abusing people and arresting people and being violent with people, I've started filming it and I've called out and called them terrorists. And, you know, I've asked them if they're slave traders when they've tried to question me. Why are you questioning me? Are you a slave trader? You know, what, what makes you think you have a, a right of jurisdiction over me? But you can, like I said, you can do this when you're in a public place. You can do this when you're in a crowd of people. It's very difficult to do on your own sometimes. I mean, you've got to pick your fights. I'll never stand oh, up yeah. against three cops on the side of the road if they've pulled me over in a car and I'm by myself because I'll just beat you up and tase you because they can. They'll say you right. did whatever they, they want to say. 
and they'll they'll do what they can. I mean, they've killed people on the side of the road. So, I mean, you've got to pick your fights with these people. But if you've got the whole community that actually respects each other and understands who and what they are, understands they are each a unique expression of creation, that no one has jurisdiction over them, that, that, that we created government to manage our infrastructure for us, that's its only purpose, and that if we had oh, respect yeah. for each other, we'd have the power to stand up and fix this in one day. And the only reason we don't have respect for each other is because we're kept in a constant state of competition and disrespect for each other via this system. It does that. That's what it, we've all been trained to do this stuff. We're all running programs, you know. Well, I think we can what, fix what things really me, easily, you know. What bothers me is I see the natural progression. You go back to that famous video of the guy saying, don't tase me, bro. And everybody in the room that's watching this exchange, they just kind of sit there horrified. They don't say anything to them. They're just watching it. And I'm like, why isn't somebody helping this kid? He's done absolutely nothing, and he's being assaulted by these guys. I mean, somebody help him. And, you know, they didn't do anything. And then you see the difference with, uh, the eight-year-old kid, I, and I wish I could just play the audio. I, I, I can't because there's just one F-bomb after the other that people are, are hurling at this cop. And as soon as the, the cop hits this kid, the people just start flipping out. And they're like, we know where you live. Uh, you know, you know, how about if we, you know, we come after you and your kids, I mean, and blah, 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 blah. And you see, you see the progression. And so what I'm waiting for, unfortunately, is at some point, what, are 50 people going to jump that cop in the street as he's dragging somebody's kid off? And, and then what we know is going to happen is for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, then what, the cops are going to circle the wagons? And, you know, and it just keeps escalating. Where, where does it end? And the way the cops deal with things is a natural escalation. They try to escalate above whatever the situation is so that they can impose their will and that itself is an escalation if you're dealing with the wrong type of situation or the wrong type of person who, who has no qualms about getting violent. So, I mean, it bothers me. But I don't want to see this stuff happen, Max. This is not where I want to see society go. But there's a segment of the society that wants to see it go there because they're going to directly profit from it. Well, yeah, absolutely. And there's also a certain selection of society that, that wants to retaliate that way as well. I mean, and you can understand it. People have been brutalized and they want, they're angry and they, they oh, want yeah. retribution. They want revenge. I mean, they've been programmed into this, you know, order out of chaos, order out of chaos. That's what they want. They want this revolution. They want violent revolution. They want violence on the streets. They want angry people. They've, they've got all the hollow points, they've got all the weapons they need, they've got their, right. their UAVs, their tanks, they've got all this stuff that they need, um, and they want it. They're pushing and pushing and pushing because they mm -hmm. want that violence. And I, I truly believe that, that violence won't achieve anything. We've had violent revolutions in the past. There may be times when it's necessary to defend yourself, but I don't think open violence and open attacking of anything is going to work. I think what people really need to do is step above it all and realize that it's all fiction. And if we had the power of community, you know, we could we could achieve everything without violence at all. We really could. You know, there's a lot of people on this planet that are awake to the problems, and more and more people are waking up all the time. We just need to have that respect for each other and, and realize that we're all struggling through this. We're all got to pay to be alive. It's not about the stuff you own that makes you who you are. It's about your relationships with others. That's true wealth. True wealth is oh, yeah. your health, your health, the state of the environment that you live and your relationships with others. That is wealth. And if we have that, we can change everything. We really can. And I think that, um, you know, we excel in hard times and the, the more difficult they make it, the more helping hands you're going to see being offered to people from the community around them. And it's, it, they're not going to be able to do it. No matter how hard they try to lock human consciousness down, I don't think that they'll ever get away with it. I think we'll rise above it. I really do. No matter how much they try to control us, because all they're doing is, you know, more and more people are waking up. The more they lock yeah. society down, the more people are waking up. People that you wouldn't even think would be talking about this are now talking about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, do you do, do you think? Because uh, I really do believe that when you go back to like the 1960s, I think people that there was an awakening taking place at that point in time, and then the whole drug culture was brought in and it was like, shh, 
go back to sleep. Here's some yeah, nice yeah. LSD. Here's some nice other drugs. Go night, night, go back to sleep. And they were able to kind of push that down in the hamper a little further. And, and then I believe these people knew um, that our generation, I'm 49, and our children's generation, those that are coming up, I, I go to the quote unquote liberal coffee shop all the time, okay? And you know what I see in there, Max? I see young people, 18, 19, 20, 25. They're, they're, they have hair down to so – one guy, I love him. He has hair down to his back. He looks like the biggest hippie in the world, and he is like the biggest libertarian you're ever going to find. And he's the exact opposite of what you would expect him to be, which I think is wonderful. And, and they're, they're having these discussions. And, and I talked with this eight, uh, 18-year-old girl – Two nights ago in the coffee shop, and there was four four other people around. We're having these discussions about these types of things, and I'm like, when I was 18, my head was up my arse, and I didn't have conversations like this. And this, these people must have known that this generation coming up, that that they were going to be this awake, and they're doing everything that they can to quash it. And, and I really do believe that. Oh, well, they are, from every possible angle. This is what all the vaccinations are about. It's what the whole electromagnetic control grid is all about. The fluoride in the water, the television, everything. Everything they're doing to try to keep people disconnected. The whole gaming culture, all of it. Yeah. It's all designed to, to lock down this generation because human consciousness is evolving. It really is. Human consciousness is becoming so aware. Kids are being born so aware. Without the vaccines, I've got a little, I've got a friend who's got this two-year-old girl you got to hear the vocabulary on this little two-year-old girl. She's amazing, this little kid. No vaccines, you know. She's, yeah. she's a totally healthy little girl, and she's, she's treated like a, a real person. She's not treated like a child. She's given free reign to be herself. You know, mm -hmm. she's kept in line. She's got a very, very good mother who, who you know, always makes a clean up after herself and, and, and be responsible, you know. And she's an amazing little two-year-old. So this is what we're seeing. All the new kids are being born are just incredibly... You know, connected and yeah there's a huge huge push to lock lock human consciousness down but like i said the more they do it the more people are waking up they're becoming aware of it all the truths mm -hmm. come out about fluoride the truth about all the toxins and the gmo food and what they're doing i mean it's it's disgusting so you know people are beginning to realize that all of the little problems that they're facing are all symptoms we can step above it all there is a higher harmonic the higher harmonic is is government corruption itself the government that have They've put all this legislation in place. It's allowed all these corporations to run amok. Okay, yeah. well, it's controlled by banking cartels above that, but it's the governments that really have put the legislation in place uh, through the dictates of the banking cartels, whatever. The, 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 the government is the vector. The, the government is where all the paper-based matrix comes from, and these people are simply public trustees. They're our employees. We're above that. We can step above the whole thing and realize that we're only answerable to our creator, whatever we perceive that to be. All the rest of it is fiction. We made the whole lot up, and we can change it any time we want. All we have to do is respect each other, and, and we can do it, you know? I mean, we're all, we're all unique, and we're all individual, individual, and we're all valid. Everybody's valid. Everybody has a completely unique and valid perspective of reality. I mean, you're here talking on the radio. You want people to respect you and to know you and to see your perspective as valid. So why would you look at anybody else's perspective as being invalid? Because they're just right. as important as you, and we all are. So once we can realize this, all, all the barriers break down, and we could, we could really do some incredible things. I mean, the human species, man, we've got so much potential. Oh, know, yeah. th this whole society, it doesn't serve humankind at all. I mean, I don't even know why or how we would come up with something like this civilization, because it doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve no, it's the planet. not. It's not supposed to serve us. It's supposed to serve them. <laughs> well, that's the thing. <laughs> you know, it's there to serve them, and 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 it's really um, it, it, the the more I learn, the more disgusted I am by it. And, and I and I've noticed that as I've learned um, certain things that were just to me so evil, so dark that it would take me a while to assimilate it. I would get sometimes really depressed. And, and I'd have to just kind of work it through my system and then come out the other side in one piece and then 
you know, I get a, a leap in my understanding, but, but it's just like, man, are things really, are things really that dark and that evil? I mean, is this stuff, is some of this stuff really that bad? And I have to look at, look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what, Kevin? Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Some of this stuff really is that evil and that bad. Um, well, and, and you learn, and you just learn how to you learn how to deal with it, you know. Because for me, Max, when people go through that process of waking up, I call it the rude awakening. Because you find out that you know all this is a big fraud. You find out all the things you believed in; they're not real, and you have to make that mental adjustment to to accepting that. And that's a really hard thing to do. And and the best that I've been able to find is that, you know, I know speaking only for myself here is that. I went through a process just like when my grandfather died, my, my grandparents, people close to me. I went through a mourning process of realizing what reality really is. And I'm still to some degree going through that and probably always will be but as more of the big picture you know, becomes clear. You know, like when you focus in on a camera on a particular object and I'm like, oh, my God, Mamma Mia, this stuff is just, oh, you know, what do I do? You know, and oftentimes I've I've told people on this program, you know, when you look at what we call the new world order, it's not a bunch of blind guys feeling an elephant to try to figure out what it is. I say it's a bunch of blind guys feeling a blue whale and trying to figure out what the heck is sitting in front of them because it's it's that big. You know well, what I'm it saying? is. It's pretty huge. It is pretty huge, and it's been going on for a long time. And it's it's, I mean, new world order. It's a, it's an interesting term. They want a new world order. Nobody wants it, but we don't want the old world order. You know what I right. mean? The old world right, order right. is what's created this. And yeah. nobody wants change. They want change, but they don't want change. It's it's an interesting dichotomy that they've set up with the whole new world order thing. Yeah, yeah. So they, they hijack all the ideas as well, because we do need some sort of new world order. We need a new world, but without the order, I guess. Yeah, without, we need. without we need, them, actually. Yeah, you know, we don't want that control. We don't need things to be orderly. Nature isn't supposed to be orderly. Life isn't supposed to be orderly. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, open and creative and spontaneous and synchronistic. That's yes. what life should be. And uh, we don't need that order. What we need is self responsibility. You know, you, you can't order anything. You, you'll never be able to order human consciousness and get it to react the way you want until you can roboticize it, which is what the whole transhumanist agenda is all about. Yes. This is what all the whole GM food's about, the, the fluoro. I mean, this all leads down to transhumanism. This is what the Internet's about. I actually put out a film last year called um, Transformation that you'll yeah. find on my website, thecrowhouse.com. It's also on Vimeo where I talked about transhumanism and where they're going with nanotechnology and all this sort of stuff. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to create this singularity we're not realizing that we're already part of a singularity. We're already part of a single consciousness. We've just forgotten who we are as individuals. And I think that's that's the important thing. And there's no way we can fight against this system. There's no way you can vote people in and vote people out. There's no um, movement we can form. What we have to do is discover ourselves and step away yeah. from the fiction. That's what we have to do. That's the only remedy that will ever be found is to rediscover ourselves, rediscover our connection to life. It's it's not in stuff. It's not in trinkets. It's not in right. you, you, your new car or your big front door. It's in your heart. And, and many people go through life without ever discovering themselves, and, and that's what we have to get back. That That's where the remedy lies. Yeah, because what you're talking about leads right back to Edward Bernays and, and the way that he was able to change the way society worked, I mean, through through advertising. It was called the father of modern advertising. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, you look at a film like Century of the Self, and they talk about the fact that, you know, when you went out to buy something, you bought it because, you know, you and the wife sat down and figured, well, you know, we need to, you know, get this because we need it. Well, now, I mean, you see every ad on television, it's all about how you feel feel when you're going to have it. Not that you need it. It's just how you're going to feel and how complete you're going to be and how it's going to just be the greatest thing ever in your life. And, and that's not true, is it? No, it's not. I mean, the greatest thing in your life is, is your life, is your health and your relationship with those yeah. around you. I mean, even you think about it, everywhere you go, you go to France. Yeah, I love France. Well, what was good about France? It was the people you met while you were there. Yeah. And the times that you had, wherever you go, you might be in Connecticut, you could be in Arkansas, it doesn't matter where you are, it's the people, it's the quality of the relationships you yeah. have 
with the people and with the place, the, the earth mm -hmm. where you are. Mm -hmm. That's what makes a place good. It's the relationship. It's your connection to the life around you that makes any place good. It doesn't matter where it is. Anywhere can be good if you have that connection. You know, would, and that, that's you, what we've lost, you know. Would you agree? For me, when I look at what's going on, everything that these guys are about is controlling everything. That's, that's the, you're looking at the ultimate control freaks. So for me, I mean, I, I am always telling people, even when I had this conversation at the coffee shop, I'm telling them, think for yourself, be an individual, because to me, that's the one thing that scares them the most is, is, oh, my God, we got one that can think for themselves. They're not part of the herd. They, they've broken off from the herd mentality, and they're an individual. Yeah, they don't and, like individuals. And that terrifies them. Well, they do, but they're, they're psychopaths. See, this is the way psychopaths think. Psychopaths don't like anybody, anything they can't control, or anybody that might think outside of the box. They like to manipulate everybody, and they like everyone have, you know, to do what they want them to do. And a psychopath will always feel that someone may be a threat to them if they don't control that person. And there might be someone born somewhere someday who may yep. be a threat to me at some stage. So I have to control the whole world in order to prevent that from ever happening because I Gee, won't ever like, be safe until I control yeah. everybody and everything else, you know? That sounds like the bunch of bull dookie we were given in 2003 to start the Iraq War. Yeah, funny that, isn't it, you know? Isn't See, they're psychopaths. Funny? They're psychopaths, and that's just the way they think. That's why... You'll never be able to convince these people to um, have empathy and actually do things right. I mean, we have protests. We, everybody you speak to wants positive change, but we never get it. No matter what we do, no matter how many protests, no matter how many movements, no matter what we do, we never, ever seem to be moving in a positive direction. But that's what right. everyone wants. And it's because everyone's operating within the parameters of a psychopathic system. It's a system created by psychopaths, and they have no empathy. And when you have right. psychopaths who control a system, control a corporation or control a government, then their morality becomes the morality of the system over which they preside. So we've got a system. The system itself is based on psychopathic parameters. So while we're adhering to those parameters, we're never going to fix anything. We have to step above the fiction. That's the only way we'll ever find remedy. Hey, we got uh, less than a minute left. Max, I want to thank you so much for coming on the program. Let's get you back on again. I want to talk to you some more. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, folks, I'm Kevin Gallagher. I thank you so much for joining us here on the show tonight. We'll be back next Tuesday night, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And, Max, real quick, uh, your websites, et cetera. My website is thecrowhouse.com. You'll find all the connections to everything I do there. I've got a YouTube channel, the Facebook pages. It's all there. It's all on thecrowhouse.com, the films I've made, my radio shows. It's, it's all there. Fantastic. And uh, for, for Max Eigen, I'm Kevin Gallagher. Thank you for tuning in tonight to Time Out with Kevin Gallagher. We'll be back next week, and uh, we are over and out. Bye-bye.